Hi there everybody, it's week three of our Portfolio Project 3 course and we have just wrapped up the assembly cut of your video project. So this was the rough cut and uh, I have um, at this point posted my feedback on those so take a look at the feedback that's there and, um, and take that into account as you move ahead. We are going now into the fine cut so I'm sure you have your own vision for where the um, video is headed so you know, take your your own creative vision into account but also consider the feedback that I um, have posted to FSO as well in um, allowing those to take form and, and really be refined. Um, one of the main things I want to emphasize with these projects is that these are um, these are your portfolio projects, obviously, so you want these to really be representative of your best work at this point in your program. Um, these are meant to be kind of milestones in your learning, so you want to show um, what, you, what you have gained through the digital video course, through the digital audio course, um, and really make this a showpiece for you. Um, you'll be adding these later on to your portfolio website, um, once you know, once you graduate, if you choose to keep these pieces in your portfolio or add some alternate pieces, that's up to you. But um, these are meant to really reflect what you have gained so far. And besides that, um, since we are simulating actual um, client work that you would be doing for your portfolio subject, you want this to be something that um, that your client, the portfolio subject you've chosen, would be proud of and want to represent their brand. Maybe it's your brand, and if that's the case, then you know even even more so you want to be proud of these pieces. So really put the effort in, um, take the time to, to shoot the video and set up you know some some uh, sets if you need to. And a set can be really uh, really simple. It doesn't have to be a, a big complex stage. It can just be a couch, some house plants. Um, a, a reasonably attractive backdrop with you know, maybe some art or even a blank wall if, if there's nothing else but um, but uh, consider that uh, and make this really visually impressive cut away to other visuals to represent what's being discussed within the video if you know if you're talking about different types of um, clients that your brand might represent then show some examples of that if it's um, products that you're talking about and show some examples of that as well. Um, just make it more visually interesting as, as well as delivering compelling content. So um, uh, just some factors to take into consideration as you move ahead with the fine cut. This won't be the final version. I'm going to have you do the fine cut, which I know in the video class was your, your final draft. Um, but since we want to make sure that, that you walk away with the best possible version of this video. I'm going to give you another round of feedback after this and then have you turn it in one final time in week four. I'm still hoping to get some uh, feedback from, from Rene Otero. I know this is, this is not his course and so he's got his own workload to deal with, so, but hopefully if he gets time he'll give some uh, input as well. In addition to your fine cut, you also have the logo design, and that's that second project for the month that um, hope you may have slipped your mind since it's been sort of on the back burner. Um, but um, go ahead and wrap that up this weekend. Add it to your style guide document, which you hopefully have saved from Portfolio Project 2. And, um, and that's going to be the final touch to the style guide. And after that, you can um, you'll you'll be turning that into a PDF, so it can be hosted on your portfolio site as well. Um, so you can go ahead and be proactive and, and do that as well. But um, that's not a requirement. But um, but it wouldn't hurt if you wanted to do that at that point. Um, some criteria for the logo design, just as reminders, it has to be your own original creation. We shouldn't include any copyrighted material, but it can include royalty-free graphics if you want to use some existing clip art um, or photos or typefaces like uh, fonts. Um, use those very sparingly. Really make this your own creative work and, uh, and make it represent your subject. 
You want to incorporate the brand colors that you chose for your subject back in Portfolio Project 2. So refer back to that style guide because remember you're complying with the style guide, with the style that you have set as the, the creative director. And it should convey the essential themes, value, and personality of your subject's brand identity. So it uh, should be true to who they are. And I think that all right, that's the main points. Let's see. And uh, here's some examples um, of what this will look like in your style guide. This is um, from some previous students. Here is the logo design as well as some criteria for logo usage. Um, the requirement is that it is to be used on all documents that represent the company, whether digital or print. Acceptable modifications are not approved ad adherent to brand consistency. If the color, if I color, if color is a restriction in print, the only acceptable variation would be to reproduction in black and white. So this is the kind of um, criteria you would set. You can imagine, as the artistic director or the creative director representing this company, you want to make sure the logo is used in a um, in visually appealing and uh, and respectful manner to represent the company at all times. So you would put these kind of requirements on there. Um, and this is a second one, a second example. And in this case, he actually bullet pointed out specific things that you cannot do to this logo. And that's rotate it in any direction, change the colors, add any effects like 3D effect or something along those lines, or a, a glow, outer glow, or something along those lines. So just get a little um, cliche, so mostly I would say avoid those. Use an old version of the logo or combine our logo with an other brand's logo. Um, from my personal experience, I, I worked at a time for the Lockheed Martin Corporation and um, they had a, a, I would say a laundry list of requirements, but what it came down to is you're not doing anything to the logo. It is taken as it is because I, I had developed uh, a website in an internal website for the company and uh, it was a had a global theme so I was going to have the, the Lockheed Martin star zooming around like a satellite but they um, they put a stop to that pretty quick so that is where we're at right now um, let me know if you do have any questions or any concerns and I'll be happy to work with you hopefully everything is going pretty smoothly